events is um, the it includes four specific things. It includes the lymph system. Um, firstly, so the lymph system produces the white blood cells, and these white blood cells are crucial um, for majority of the immune response. And they're basically networks of tissue, and there are networks of tissues and organs which help to rid the body of toxins. So we've got um, cervical lymph nodes. We've got cervical lymph nodes, thoracic duct, the thymus right there, um, the spleen, the pelvic lymph nodes. So all of these tissues and organs that are working together to flush out um, toxins and waste from the body. Secondly, we've got inflammation. So inflammation is uh, basically swelling. So when there is the dilation of blood vessels and infiltration of inflammatory cells at the site of infection. And that causes heat, pain, redness, swelling and acute loss of function. So there are five cardinal signs of inflammation, pain, heat, redness, swelling and loss of function. That's the last one. Um, and that generally doesn't happen. It's usually sort of this, depending on obviously what the injury is. Okay, we then have the second line of defense, which is, um, uh, uh, sorry, the third part of the second line of defense, which first is phagocytosis. So this is definitely a term you want to remember, phagocytosis. So phagocytosis um, involves special white blood cells, including macrophages and uh, neutrophils. And what they do is, what, what phagocytosis includes is, um, these specific white blood cells change the shape, change their shape to engulf a pathogen. They basically eat up a pathogen. And... Um, they do this and then they destroy them using um, acid. And, and lysomes play a huge role in, um, in this process because lysomes, as you would know, generally are responsible for the waste um, and disposal. So they play a huge role in actually, firstly, we've got the, uh, the um, uh, sorry, from here. So what we see is that the special white blood cells here, for example, a macrophage goes ahead, it captures the pathogen right there. From there, it takes the pathogen into the body. And then we see these lysomes come across and they come through and they um, use acid to destroy the pathogen and through that the pathogen is destroyed and then it is dispersed from the cell right there. So that's phagocytosis. Then we've got cell death to seal off pathogens, and this is known as apoptosis. So this involves the cells, which are the time macrophages and lymphocytes. Um, uh, so in lymphocytes, which completely surround the pathogen, and then they die. So they form a cyst, and that cyst is um, filled with pus, and through that, they block pathogen movement and also block the nutrient supply to the pathogen, which is obviously helping the pathogen, and that causes it to die. So as you can see here, it's so a normal, that is a regular cell, but now it's condensing, so they're basically, um, once they've got their pathogen over here, they're basically, um, completely they've surrounded it, and they have, and if it is, um, filled with pus it's forming a cyst and through that it is killed um, and it leaves these fragments here so this is apoptosis right there so now we've gone through two very important um ideas the first and the second line of defense and both of them are part of the innate immunity with that uh, we will now look at adaptive immunity, but an adaptive immunity is basically the immune response. The first two, um, obviously the immune system plays a role, but we don't actually see the key players of immune system and innate immunity. They come through in adaptive immunity. So if you were to compare with innate immunity, firstly, innate immunity is always there. Your body, you know, there's mechanical barriers, they're always there. They're not, you know, sort of facing in and out, they're always there. <laughs> And it includes the first and second line of defense. Specificity is that it is non-specific, so it's not specific to a disease. You know, for example, your cilia um, is not only going to move when it sees a specific disease. It's non-specific and it aims to um, stop any disease from coming into your body. The response rate is rapid. This happens quite rapidly. Phagocytosis, apoptosis, these processes are happening rapidly. Um, 
does so is there immunological memory so for example do those cells remember oh do those cells remember okay this is how we have um for instance you know killed these cells no so that means that it does not have immunological memory and so the keywords here are always um to remember innate right so it's innate it is constant it is non-specific it there's a rapid response um and most importantly there's no immunological memory adaptive immunity on the other hand now is something that arises when the pathogen enters the body once the pathogen has gained entry into the body and it is not being stopped earlier on and you know killed for example so for example in the early in innate immunity if it was sort of uh, stopped in the cilia or something um or if it was stopped let's say in the uh, in the stomach acid uh, oh i should not stop there but it was you know in that region specifically the uh macrophages may come and induce phagocytosis and finish off the um the bacteria but that would mean that it has made that it has gained entry into the body basically so now adaptive immunity comes into play when the pathogen has gained entry into the um into the body and there are two main elements that you're always going to remember with this those are b cells and t cells so b for bat t for toy so b cells and t cells um and these at this response and these cells specifically are highly specific this response is specific it is tailored to the pathogen that enters the body so it's going to be very specific to that pathogen because every pathogen is of course different and needs to be dealt with differently and that is what the adaptive immunity does the response rate is that primary exposure is slow the first time that a pathogen enters your body the response is going to be slow and i'm going to explain in one second why that is however the second time that pathogen enters the body the response is going to be a lot faster and that is because the adaptive immunity has immunological memory the b cells and t cells actually remember how they dealt with a specific pathogen and so our keywords here are that it's adaptive, it is highly specific, it has immunological memory. 